Okay, so welcome to the Rutgers New Faculty Talk Series. Uh, this is something we're starting new this year uh, to have faculty introduce themselves to the campus. And our first ever is Abelia Hernandez. So let's hear about your work. Hello, good afternoon everyone. My name is Abelia Hernandez and I'm in the Graduate School of Education in the um, Educational Psychology Department. So here's a little bit about my educational background. Um, and I also think that to talk about my educational background, I also like to talk about my professional background as well. Um, my field, College Student Affairs, does have that synergy of um, professional um, preparation and experience and the educational background. So I did start at Cal State Chico with an English degree, and that's where I found my interest in student affairs. Um, after that, I went to California State University, Northridge, and that's where I did my counseling degree in college student, and um, with a focus of college counseling and student services. When I was there, however, that's where I found my interest in doing research, and um, subsequently I went to Indiana University. And just in between um, finishing my degree at Indiana and coming here to Rutgers, um, I was a visiting assistant professor over at Miami University of Ohio. And that's where um, I got some experience working in college student affairs and doing um, teaching there. So um, I started off talking a little bit about my educational background and my professional experiences, um, in part because um, I get my interest in doing my research based on my college experiences. Um, I do focus on Latino college students specifically. And I guess, again, going back into my own experiences, um, I'm really interested on how the ways that they engage affects their college experience and also how they develop. So what I mean by that, um, how, they, how becoming parts of organizations, um, interacting with faculty, the scholarship that students do on campus, um, how that affects their development in, in a bunch of different ways. So, for example, I'm very interested in looking at how they develop in three specific dimensions. Cognitively, which is how they learn. Um, intrapersonal, which is their ethnic identity. And interpersonal, which is their cultural orientation. Um, all those combined together for the holistic development model that I worked with while I was a doc student at Indiana University. So, getting a little bit more about my research, um, again, going back into my own history, um, I was a Mexican-American woman engaged in activism as an undergraduate. So, I wondered, does that have any effect on people's development? And so what I did for my dissertation work is I interviewed seven women, also Mexican-American, and I asked them um, the impact that their activism played on their own sense of selves and their development. And what I found is that their motivation to engage in activism, it changed over time. So when they became first-time freshmen, they were interested in doing activism like becoming part of a Latino student organization because they wanted to make friends. And I thought, well, that's, that's pretty much how my experience was, too. Um, but as time went on, they learned more about politics. They learned more about the Latino culture. They learned more about social issues. And that, in turn, changed their motivation. It became more internalized. They did it because they felt the need to, not necessarily because all their friends were doing it. So what I saw from that is that as their cognitive development grew and became more complex, and their understanding of social issues became more complex, and also their understanding of what it means to be Latino, that that in turn changed their motivation and, and the meaning behind this behavior, that if you were just to look at it throughout the four years, the behavior stayed pretty much the same, but the impact of that behavior changed over time. Um, interestingly enough, I wasn't looking for it, but I found that Latin, Latina sororities played a, a very interesting role. Um, some of these women were talking about the different organizations that they were involved in, and they talked about being involved in Latina sororities. Um, usually when you think about sororities, you think of parties, good times, you know, things like that. But they talked about it being a way to engage politically, for them to put their activism as a woman and as a Latina woman at the forefront. So this idea of Latina sororities being a political organization is something that I haven't seen too much in the literature, and that's something I would like to investigate a little bit further. 
And finally, the thing that also um, contributed to the literature was that I did talk to alumni students. These were people that were about 10 years out of their undergraduate experience. So in the literature, in higher ed literature, you really don't see too much about alumni talking about their experiences. And isn't that interesting that, you know, we, here we are researching about the impact of college, but we don't really ask too much the alumni to see what that was about. So I think that here at Rutgers is a very interesting place for me to continue my research. And the main reason is that I see a huge number of Latino students engaging in many different ways. Currently, there's about 10 Latina sororities, just Latina sororities, 10 of them. Um, and there's a really rich history about Latino student activism, as there is in other, other student groups. I think there's also a book that was, re, um, that was written about black student activism. So going back and looking through the archives, looking through um, whatever information I can find, maybe from CLAC, to develop a historical account of what happened here during the 70s and 80s, talking about how these organizations were created, um, even a couple of Latina sororities were started here on campus. So, and I think one of them um, was the first Latina sorority and probably one of the largest. It started here at Rutgers. So why is that? Um, what role did these women play? What did they learn from that? And wouldn't it be interesting again to talk to these alumni and see why they did it and what they got out of it? Um, I've also started doing some qu quantitative work with a colleague. Um, we're looking at Nessie data which is a national survey on student engagement. And that data um, pulls from hundreds of colleges across the country and asks them about their engagement, or in other words, how they spend time at the library, what organizations do they belong to, what do they do socially, how they interact with their peers. So we're looking at that data to really just get to the Latino student experience because it hasn't really been looked at um, just looking at Latino students. And we found some very interesting findings already. One of them, interestingly enough, is to look at Latinos involved in Greek organizations. And what we found is that compared to other groups, it's more negative. The effect is more negative for students, Latino students involved in fraternities and sororities um, compared to other groups. So it's very interesting because I have one body of research that talks about how significant being in a sorority is but then I look at the quantitative data and it says it's a very negative outcome compared to other groups. So that's a big puzzle for me. I'll be working on it while I'm here at Rutgers. Thank you.